So this lesson is all about the effects of exercise. And look, we're, we're focused on this short term. We could refer to this as immediate things that actually happen during the performance themselves. These are not the training effects, but what happens if we start doing some of this stuff? What internally takes place? And I want to kind of categorize our responses into a bunch of categories. And the first of those is going to be the muscular responses. Well, look, the, the first thing, I mean, it seems extremely simple to say, but when we are performing during exercise, let's say it's a sporting action, let's say it's a, uh, I've never done one in my life, but we've got a parallel bars routine. I can only dream, dream of such things as a sort of table tennis and football playing games person, but more contractions occur. Okay, so we've got this sort of notion of force generation and production uh, within, within the muscle. Okay, now what we're also going to say here is that as a result of this, we experience up arrow. That means an increase in blood flow to the muscle blood flow to the muscle so it goes without saying that these categories of muscular in this case the blood flow to the muscle of course is increasing but that's part it's kind of vascular as well or cardiovascular right so that's worth just considering but we get an increased direction or distribution of blood to the muscle that's working the muscle itself is generating force therefore it is releasing heat and that leads to an up arrow increase in muscle temperature now i'm not going to get into this today but an increase in muscle temperature is not disastrous for the performance of the muscle itself there are a couple of things that increases the pliability or flexibility of the muscle but also and again maybe we'll get into this in another level of study it actually increases the proportion of oxygen which leaves the blood and enters the muscle cell itself which is not uninteresting of course we're saying that we would have an up arrow and increase in aerobic respiration remember that the site of aerobic respiration is always the mitochondria so the mitochondria will start releasing more energy through aerobic respiration but depending on what we do and of course we will also have an increase in anaerobic respiration which is happening in the cell in the in the in the cytoplasm of the cell or in muscle cells we would actually say respiration we'd actually say in the sarcoplasm so these are some of the muscular changes that are happening so that's going on over here and i must do this in red i guess is i'd like to talk about the cardiovascular changes so again if we are if we are jockey if we're riding a horse if we're playing a netball match if we are doing gymnastics or slalom skiing i think is going on here going on here cardiovascular what's happening well this is an interesting one first of all we get an, a release of adrenaline often before the activity is started and that impacts on the heart and it effectively increases heart rate that happens during exercise we also get an increase up arrow in cardiac output remember cardiac output is the volume of blood leaving the heart per minute that increases during exercise we also get an up arrow increase in what's called venous return now what we mean by this is when these performers are performing let's imagine a heart in the chest of this performer here there's actually i'll do it in black although it's obviously going to be uh, not that color this blood but we've actually got more blood returning to the heart more efficiently and that's what we mean by venous return more blood returning but we've also got an increased production of co2 of course that comes from aerobic respiration over here we've got a, an overall increase in temperature Okay, the blood itself becomes warmer. That actually loosens the blood a little bit as well, which is not too disastrous. We get an increase in blood pressure, particularly what we refer to as systolic blood pressure, okay, which is the blood pressure when the heart is in contraction phase. And we also get the vaso, the vaso constriction, the vaso constriction, and vasodilation, vaso constriction and vasodilation. Of vessels and specifically we're talking about arteries there or in smaller arteries and just to be clear if this was an artery or a small artery here this artery inside it has a layer of kind of smooth muscle and this one here we could describe this as vasodilated why because the opening inside is nice and large okay but if i was to draw another one here trying to make it roughly the same and if we had a vasoconstricted smooth muscle i'll try and the, the smooth muscle might be more like that, sort of constricted down. So now, of course, the space, the lumen in, inside this artery is much, much smaller because it's vasoconstricted, the smooth muscle there. And that, of course, changes the blood pressure in different parts of the system. Now, if you consider that during exercise, vasodilation 
would occur to parts of the body such as the working muscles and vasoconstriction would occur to parts of the body such as the liver, the pancreas, the skin, these things. Well, actually, skin's an interesting one because that, for a different reason, it could vasodilate. But um, let's say the stomach, we've got vasoconstriction and restricted blood flow. So there's that. Now, I want to finish this off nice and strongly. And I want to talk here about the digestive system. So let's put this in here. What during exercise changes in relation to the digestive system? Well, I've just mentioned one of them in terms of vasoconstriction. We get a reduction of blood to the digestive system. So I'm just going to put to DS, to the digestive system. Why? Because it's been redirected to muscle. As a result, this slows down digestion which is an interesting challenge because of course if we were doing a very long performance which i must admit none of the images i've got up here i mean what's um what's that ball 60 minutes isn't it overall uh horse race i suppose it could be up to 10 minutes potentially uh this is going to be what 50 seconds if that i would imagine something like that in a slalom race what two minutes something along those lines maybe none of these are particularly long events but if we had something like road cycling or triathlon up here of course the digestion continues to be necessary for us but they're probably going to take on food and fluids as they're performing and competing so that's actually an interesting balance and the other thing we can say <laughs> well <laughs> th your exam board would like me to tell you i'll write it down for you that muscles strengthen uh, yeah okay i'm just going to write that down it's in your specification. Crikey. Um, now then, let's go on to respiratory. Okay, let's go on to respiratory. So what happens during exercise? What's happening in this jockey's lungs, in this gymnast's lungs? What's happening here? And let's say, oh, that's not going to work. What's happening here in this performer's lungs? Okay, so what are the distinctions during exercise? So first of all, our body is capable of detecting changes or it detects detect changes in CO2 and O2 levels. Okay, now this is what we'd call chemoreception. I'm not going to get into it here. But as a result of that, we can increase the depth of breathing. Of course, we would refer to that as tidal volume goes up, coming closer and closer to vital capacity. And we could also say that we increase our respiratory rate. In other words, we breathe faster. And the only point I would make to you on that one is that this happens first and this happens second. So we breathe more deeply and then we breathe faster. So this performer, as she hurtles her way down this alpine mountain, presumably, her depth of breathing will increase first and then afterwards her rate of breathing will increase. Same with the gymnast, same with the jockey, same with the netball players. Okay, those are the short-term effects of exercise, the immediate effect of exercise, what happens during exercise. Thanks.